Uh, we have a good God who is good all the time. And uh, I, I've been away this week, I've been in Newcastle all week, and uh, it's not always easy to be away from family and things, but uh, during this week, and certainly leading up to this week, God has really been speaking to me. And it, I, I've really been thrilled about what God has been saying to me personally. And, and there are a number of things. And <clears throat> I just wanted to share something which I feel is very important. And in many ways, it leads on from what Liz shared. It, in, in, it, it leads on very well. And I, I wasn't there on Wednesday, so it might actually fit in with what it, it comes out on Wednesday. And, and that is that God really, really wants to speak to us individually. God wants to lead us by His Spirit. Every one of us. It's not just, uh, I think as Liz saying, a hierarchy, he speaks to the leaders and we all follow. No, it's not that. We are all born again by the Spirit and the Spirit of God wants to lead us as individuals. God wants to speak to us. But I think it's important we understand not necessarily all the detail of how God does it, but the principles of how God speaks to us. And to do that, we need to understand who we are as people and what makes us who we are as Christians. And the first thing that we need to understand is that God is a spirit. God is spirit. Now, we know it in our minds, but we need to understand it fully, that God is spirit. You know, we're all sort of caught up with childish images that God sat with a long beard somewhere out up in the heavens. That is not true. God is a spirit that fills not only this universe, but all the many other universes. He fills the whole of existence by himself. He is spirit. And as it's in, in, the, in the bulletin, it, you know, John 4.24 says, God is spirit. Right? We do tend to concentrate on the second part of that and when we're talking about worship in spirit and in truth, and that is right, we need to do that. But fundamentally it's saying, God is spirit. God is spirit. But then, if we actually follow through Scripture, this is why it's important that we understand fully Scripture and read Scripture. That we have been made in His image. We've been made in His image. And you know that passage in, you know, in, in, in Genesis 1, 26, that, you know, we've been made in His image, in the image of God. And so, therefore, within us, there is also spirit. If God is spirit, and we've been made in his image, we too are part of us in spirit. Okay? And... It's like, you know, Paul was saying in 2 Corinthians 4, 7, for we have this treasure within us. You know, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not us. In other words, he's talking about his spirit that's within us. We've got these jars of clay, which is our bodies, Right? 
some a bit more crap than others. <laughs> right? But within us is this treasure. That is the spirit that is there within us. So that part of us is spirit. And again, Paul says in 2 Corinthians uh, 5, verse 1 to 4, For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we grow longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened because we do not wish to be unclothed, but be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. In other words, what Paul is saying here is, you know, I have within me, as he said earlier on, his spirit, and it's clothed in this body, like this, this tent, right? And I, there are times, you know, and I feel like that when I wake up in the morning, you know, I just wished I had a better tent, <laughs> right? I wished and I long for a better dwelling place. And of course we know that when Christ returns and when we go to be with him, we will be changed and we will have that heavenly tent, that heavenly body. We will be like him in an instant. We will be changed. And Paul is saying, come on, I want to get there. And another passage he said, but it's better that I stay here for you. And so, you know, we have that constant tension. You know, I want to be with him. I want to be changed. I want to be in his presence, you know, when he comes. But I have a job to do here. I have work to do here. I have a calling to fulfill here. And I do believe for a Christian, and this is an aside, there is no untimely death. No matter how young or old that person is, when they fulfilled their calling, God takes them to be with him. That is something I believe because I've evidenced it. I believe that. And that is in Scripture. We have a work to do here. We are still clothed in this earthly tent, in this cracked jar. But we have that treasure within. And so we need to understand where we are at the moment, that we have his Holy Spirit within us. It says in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, right at the end it says this, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so that introduces, and all the way through Scripture we see that, that we're made up of components, different parts. We are spirit, we are soul, and we are body. And we need to understand that. And we might change, you know, in terms of our terminology and what we call it, but that is essentially what we're made up of. We're made up of spirit, soul, and body. We all know about the body, but our soul is our mind, our personality. It's who we are. Very much our mind. Right? And our spirit is that that dwells within us. That part that is the image of God within us. And it's the word of God that actually helps us to understand this. Hebrews 4 verse 12, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper 
than any two-edged sword that penetrates even dividing soul and spirit. It brings that clarity to our spirit and our soul. It actually shows, the Word of God shows us God rather than what we think, right? That's what this passage is saying. It's God's Word that helps us to understand what is from the Spirit of God and what is from our own mind, our own limited understanding. And it is that sharp two-edged sword. So here we are. Body, soul, and spirit. And as we read in that passage in John 3, when Nicodemus came to Jesus in the night, and we know the passage very well, and he was coming to him in the middle of the night, and he, he, he was wanting to know more about the message of Jesus. And Jesus said, unless you are born again, you will never see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus says, how can that be? You know, can I enter into my mother's womb again and be born again? And Jesus says, no. He was talking about being born of the Spirit. That when we receive Christ as Savior, then we are born of the Spirit. We are given a new Spirit. And Jesus said in John 3, 6, Flesh gives birth to flesh. Spirit gives birth to spirit. So when we are born again, we are born again in the spirit. We are given a new spirit. We're given that spirit which is sinless. That spirit which is without sin. That is the spirit, not the body, not the soul. As we know, We can be controlled by sin in our body, but the spirit within us, his spirit, is from God, and it has been born again. And it is by the spirit, his spirit within us, that we are led that God speaks to us. It is by His Spirit that God speaks to us. Again, I think it's important that we fix this in Scripture. Romans 8, verse 14. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. A hallmark of a Christian is that they are led by the Spirit of God. And so therefore, we need to be led by his Holy Spirit, communicating, speaking to our spirit. You see, God is spirit, and God, you know, the the Holy Spirit searches the, the whole mind of God and brings and reveals to our spirit the things of God. It is by his spirit God communicates to our spirit within us, which is born again and leads us in the path of God. And we need to understand that. It's not in our thinking he leads us. It's not in our bodies he leads us, but it is by his spirit. So therefore we need to be controlled by the Spirit. Not by our soul, not by our mind, and not by our bodies, but by His Spirit. It's that diagram. There's a simple diagram here, and it's just a diagram, okay? It doesn't, it's not physiologically accurate. <laughs> but th- there we have a bunch of pebbles on the beach. We've got, if you like, our spirit. There is our soul, and there is our body. And the question is, where is God leading us 
Is it by our bodies? How, you know, the aches and pains or feeling good, happy, feeling well? Or is it by our soul, our minds, how we think? Or is it by his spirit? What is important for believer is that we are controlled by the Spirit. Not by our mind, our soul, and certainly not by our bodies. We are controlled by His Spirit within us. So therefore, what God has been speaking to me very clearly in this last week or two, and I believe I want to share this morning, we need to be people where the Spirit of God is released into our thinking and into our bodies. So we move and act according to the Spirit fully. We're guided by the Spirit fully. I feel that, you know, that, that this is very important. You know, that we are not controlled by our minds, that we are not controlled by our bodies, unless they are controlled by the Spirit of God. And how do we release that Spirit? How does that Spirit begin to control our thinking and our bodies? I think this, as I said, is important because I've come across many situations, sadly, and I have to confess, in my own life as well, where I've been controlled by my body, what my body wants, or where my thinking is taking me, what seems a good idea. And I'll give you an example of this. Uh, when we were in another church many years ago, and in fact we were about to, to leave that, to, we've been to, to go to, in fact before just we went to Barnsley, uh, a fellow who had been in one of my house groups uh, came to me and he, he was confused and was bewildered. He'd got himself into a lot of financial difficulty. Massive financial difficulty. And basically where he was living, which was not far from us at the time, he couldn't afford. He had a family, he couldn't afford it. And so it, and it seemed right so he could get his finances sorted out on the right keel that he goes to a cheaper house, we could afford the mortgage. You see, he did overstretch himself and it was wrong in the first place to be there. And he'd been to one of the elders and he, the elder said, oh, well, yes, it seems good. I think God is telling you that you ought to go and live in Headingley. Some cheaper houses there. So he went and thought about it and don't get me wrong, he wasn't going from elder to elder, but one of the elders, another elder in conversation said, well, yeah, I think the best place for you to go and live is Middleton. He went to a third elder, and the third elder said, well, hmm, Chapel Town will be a good place. I believe God is telling you to move to Chapel Town. And what, what it was at the heart of it each of those elders had a vision for each of those places. One of them had a real vision for West Leeds, another had a vision for Chapel Town, Hare Hills, another had a vision for South Leeds. They were being led, not by the Spirit of God, but they were being led by their own thinking and their own body. Now, the visions weren't necessarily wrong, but to use people to fulfill the vision without listening to what God is saying for that person is wrong. 
And so what did I do? I didn't want to contradict at that time. Well, they weren't my fellow elders then, but they had been my fellow elders because we were we actually we were moving to Barnsley. And I said to you, what's God saying to you? What's God saying to you? And he said, well, we, I've talked and we prayed with my wife and my wife's family is over in Halifax and there's a church linked to the church there and it that's what you know we've been praying about it and that's what we feel from God so we prayed about it and that's what he did the interesting thing is that each of those visions of those elders didn't come to anything but this guy his wife died not long after, and he had children, and they were in the right place because they were near the parents and everything. And the children are going on with the Lord now. In fact, the daughters in the same church as our Jason in Huddersfield are going on with God, and so is the, the fellow. And they've been blessed. He was able to get his finances sorted out and God had moved him in the right place because he was listening to the Spirit. So it's important when God speaks, we listen to the Spirit. And for that to happen, we need to do something with our mind and with our bodies. And as we know that passage so well, because I've quoted it so often, what we need to do with our minds is that they are renewed by the Spirit. You know, we know that passage, you know, very well. You know, that sort of Romans 12, too. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. See, the context of that is actually listening to God. That we need our minds renewing by the Spirit. A lot of the problems in the church... A lot of the problems that Christians face in the world is this matter between the two ears. Right? It's our thinking. Our thinking is not being renewed. Our thinking is still as the world. And that is an issue for me, you know. In certain circles, but not my family, I'm considered quite intelligent. <laughs> bright I'm actually supposed to be in the top sort of 5% in this country of my intelligence and for my brightness but it's so easy for me to slip into thinking what is a good idea huh? what is a good idea pardon <laughs> well you do come from Liverpool <laughs> oh. He's a very good friend, so we could talk like this. <laughs> um, so, but that thinking has to be renewed. And I, I believe that this is crucial, because it says in, in, in Proverbs 23, verse 7, and in the NIV, it's got a, a, an alternative translation, but it says, as a man thinks, so he is. As we think... So we are. Our thinking controls what we do. If we think we're able to do something, then we do it. If we think we can't do it, then we'll never do it. As a person thinks, so they are. And so therefore, if we are to live that Christian life, we are to be led by the Spirit, our minds need to be dealt with. They need to be renewed. And they need to be renewed by His Spirit through His Word. Our thinking needs to be controlled by the Word of God, not what but the current theory of the day. Now, Scripture is not saying when we come to Him we've got to throw our mind away. No, it's not saying that. It's not putting forward a, 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 a view of Gnosticism which says that we're all spirit and we ignore the mind and we ignore, ignore the body. No, it, they're not saying that. It's saying our minds have to be renewed by the Holy Spirit. 
we need to use our minds, but which are renewed by His Spirit. So that we need His Holy Spirit to breathe His Word, so His Word controls and directs our thinking by His Spirit. That, I believe, is the starting point. It then goes to our bodies. What we've got to do to see the release of the Spirit into our bodies. And that's quite simple. You can answer that if you wish. <laughs> uh, Romans, I was actually... Uh, in a, a conference, it was your fire brigade officers, and uh, there they had a a rule that if a phone went off during the conference, they had to pay a fifty pound fine to the benevolence. <laughs> Perhaps we ought to do something like that with a church building fund. <laughs> um, it is quite simple what we have to do with our bodies we have to crucify them. Galatians 5.24 Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Now, this has been misinterpreted. It, people think that we've got to go around and certain people down. We, we've seen it when we were in uh, in sort of very strong Latin American countries where people go around whipping themselves or denying themselves all food and drink. It's not that. To crucify himself is, 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 is quite simple. And it starts in our thinking. Because Romans 8 that, sorry, Romans 6, and it, it's, it's that passage about the baptism. You know, it says there that when we have been baptized with Christ, we go under the waters, we're dead to our old way of life, and we rise up and we live our life in Christ. And it says there in verse 11, even so, consider ourselves dead to sin. So, to crucify the flesh means that I have to consider myself dead to sin. I have to consider myself. Now, when temptation comes, as it will, we have to say, I am dead to sin. I'm no longer controlled by sin. And I think I've given this illustration before, which was uh, from a, a number of years ago, Larry Christensen wrote this book called The New Landlord. It's a very small book. Do you, I don't know whether you remember it. And basically it says that this guy was living in a block of flats. He was living in a, 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 an apartment. And it had this landlord... And he never looked after the apartment, you know, it, it, it just was falling apart, and no jobs were ever fixed. You go and complain, he wouldn't listen to him, but he kept on demanding rent. He'd come out at all times of the night, banging on the door and saying, I want my rent. I want my rent. Give me the money. And even before the next month was out, he would come demanding more money making demand after demand after demand. And then all of a sudden, a new landlord came and bought the whole block of flats. And he did them up, new fitted kitchen, new furniture, fully decorated. And he said to all the tenants, you can live here free, free of charge. And any problems you have, let me know, and I'll fix them straight away. Great. 
went to bed feeling fantastic. All of a sudden, bang, 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 bang on the door. And who was it? It was the old landlord. And he said, I want my rent. I demand my rent. Do you think he paid him? No. He said to the old landlord, sorry, this flat is no longer yours. It belongs to the new landlord. Clear off. Kept on doing that. Bang, bang, bang. Clear off. Slowly didn't come so much. And that is the case, isn't it? When our body is saying, oh, I want to do this. We have to say, I am dead to sin. I've got a new landlord. Jesus is my landlord. He owns me. Satan, you've got no control over me anymore. He won't give up. He'll try again. But equally, again, we say, go away. I'm a child of God. Jesus is my landlord. I'm his. We have to reckon ourselves dead to sin. Yes, it is a battle. But we have legal right to say to Satan, clear off. I belong to Jesus. And I believe that this is what it means to crucify the flesh. To reckon ourselves dead to sin, but alive to Christ. So therefore, to be led by the Spirit needs our minds renewing by his word. So our thinking is not of the world, but our thinking is in a line with the word of God. And we reckon ourselves dead to sin. It is important, and I believe that in these days, particularly for us as a church as well as individuals, we need to be people who are led by the Spirit, not by the flesh, not by our wishful thinking, but led by the Spirit. So our district Decisions are not fleshly decisions, but spirit-filled decisions. Let us pray. Father, we just come before you now, and I, I pray for each one of us that our minds might be renewed by your Spirit according to your Word. Lord, by your Holy Spirit, come and renew our minds. Lord, give us that thinking which is in line with your word. And Father, we just thank you that as we've been singing our worship this morning, that Christ paid the price for us in Calvary. He took away our sin. And we need to reckon ourselves dead to sin, but alive to Christ. Holy Spirit, just come as a church so that we will be, as it said in your word, led by your Holy Spirit in everything we do. That the Holy Spirit truly leads us, not just in name, but in reality. Pray for each one of us as individuals, Lord. Thank you that you, as we've heard already this morning, you want to speak to us. You speak to us from within us. That Holy Spirit speaking to our spirit from within us. Amen. The promise of Jesus is if any man thirsts, let him come unto me and out of his innermost being will flow streams of living water. Amen.